Channeling sexual energy, or sexual transmutation, is about learning how to harness or channel our strong biological reproductive motivations towards productive action. And it's the most powerful source of energy that I use to fuel a life where I direct at least 100 hours per week towards growing my 50 person business, training to climb the tallest mountain in every continent, and constantly working to improve within my physical, mental, expressive, and occupational dimensions. The knowledge of how to channel my sexual energy is a big part of what separates who I am now from who I used to be. Someone who wasted the massive creative potential of this energy, consuming porn and aspiring towards meaningless sex. If you've ever practiced nofap and suddenly felt more motivation and energy towards becoming your best version, then you've already had a small taste of what this feels like. In my dopamine switch video, which is one of the most popular videos on this channel, I explain how to use dopamine detox combined with productive activities to essentially switch our motivation away from short-term gratification of social media, Netflix, and video games, and towards long-term goal-oriented activities such as work, study, and gym. Sexual transmutation is essentially that, but within the realm of purely sexual energy. And when done correctly, it feels like a massive, constant surge of motivation. Here's how it works. First, we have to look at dopamine, which is not some sort of feel-good chemical. Dopamine isn't the reward. Dopamine doesn't get released when we have sex. Dopamine is what motivates us to pursue sex in the first place. Dopamine is what motivates us in anticipation of a reward. This is why the more time we spend watching porn or browsing Instagram, the more our body begins to see those things as rewards and the more dopamine it releases to motivate us to consume more of those things, leaving us with very little motivation towards the things that we actually should be doing. Now, for every species of known animal, both male and female, reproduction is one of the primary instinctual goals that drive behavior. So our brains release massive amounts of dopamine to motivate us to reproduce. Now, here's the problem. Modern society has learned to hijack these impulses via pornography and the overglorification of meaningless sex, which I'll get to in a minute. Our impulse to reproduce is so strong and our behavior is so conditioned that we often don't realize that we've opened Pornhub until we're covered in our own penis vomit. And so the important thing to understand here is that this same overpowering impulse can instead be used as fuel. When we see it in this way, Learning to channel our sexual energy is really about making the conscious decision to readjust the reward that we're aiming towards and then letting our dopamine system do the rest. If we're aiming towards the feel-good sensations of ejaculation or meaningless sex, well then of course our dopamine is gonna motivate us towards meaningless bullshit like porn, partying, and pickup. But if we aim instead at a meaningful connection with a beautiful and talented partner, well then, there is a lot that we need to improve within ourselves to become worthy of that. And with this mentality, we can channel the sexual motivations of our dopamine system towards massive self-growth. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the exact same process that I went through. First, unlearning the toxic, self-destructive beliefs that I was born into as part of a profit-oriented society designed to consume me. And then relearning sex and sexual energy in a way that fuels me to be better. If you can make it to step two and actually apply it, I promise that therein lies the potential to completely transform your motivation and productivity. Let's begin. Step one, unlearn what doesn't serve us about our sexual energy. Learning to channel our sexual energy is really about making the conscious decision to readjust the reward that we want our dopamine system to motivate us towards. If we're not already using our sexual energy towards constructive outlets, it's because whatever understanding we do have is rooted in the lies of a society that is designed to profit off of us. Consider the multi-billion dollar porn industry. Practically 24 hours a day, most of us are never more than arm's length away from what is essentially an infinite gateway to porn and the feel-good sensations of masturbation and orgasm. Now, Elon Musk has an interesting perspective on this. A massive amount of thinking has gone into sex without procreation, which is actually quite a silly action in the absence of procreation. So why are you doing it? It's pretty absurd, really. Now, he's not saying that casual sex or even masturbation are bad, but it is fascinating to consider how billions of dollars have been made off of an act that has zero evolutionary value. 
And it isn't just porn. The cosmetic, fitness, and pickup industries all exploit our instinct to reproduce for profit. And it isn't just these industries. Uh, virtually every industry uses lifestyle manipulation to get us to believe that their products and services will make us more attractive to the opposite sex. This is most obvious in rap music, which glorifies meaningless sex and limitless consumption as being the highest human values. But my personal favorite example of this are all of the fake gurus on YouTube who showcase expensive cars and paid for girls to uh, pretend to sell some sort of course when what they're really selling is a lifestyle. A lifestyle that's not even real. Uh, most fake guru commercials are essentially just what poor people think that rich people do. And, and this is how we are <laughs> where we are today with an entire generation of men who aspire towards these things without any real consideration as to why. When these are the things that we aspire towards, well then uh, of course our dopamine systems are gonna motivate us towards meaningless bullshit like porn and cars and clubs and manipulative pickup techniques. We are born into this ugly, toxic cycle, this false reality, and we are trapped here unless we make the conscious decision to challenge the truths that form the very foundations of our reality. Step two, relearn sexual energy in a way that serves us. So if the first step involves unlearning most of what we know about reality and questioning who we aspire to be, the second step becomes about deciding what we want to believe about sex and then recalibrating who we actually aspire to be and whether or not our sexual energy plays a creative or destructive role in that process. So in my case, uh, I aspire to be the sort of man worthy of the highest level of relationship, a soulmate. And I'm just guessing here, but I would imagine that it's less than 1% of people who actually find their soulmate. And so from my perspective, that means that I ought to be better than 99% of men. I aspire to be great. And with this sort of mentality, it becomes possible to harness the power of our dopamine system to channel our sexual energy towards unimaginable growth. When I had my epiphany moment and realized that everything that I thought I knew was just the predatory hardwiring of a society designed to consume me, in that moment I became free to channel my energy however I wanted. In the book Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill dedicates an entire chapter to the power of sexual transmutation. In it, he explains, sex energy is the creative energy of all geniuses. There has never been and never will be a great leader, builder, or artist lacking in this driving force of sex. The mere possession of this energy is not sufficient to produce a genius. The energy must be transmuted from desire for physical contact into some other form of desire and action before it will lift one to the status of a genius. So what he's essentially explaining here is that if we can learn to harness the driving forces of our reproductive instincts and channel them not towards a desire for physical contact, i.e. sex for the sake of sex, but instead to channel that energy towards activities and actions that we believe will make us better, that this is the way to reach greatness. I'll give you three examples. Building a business. Instead of starting a business with the hopes that we can just make lots of money to be able to buy things to impress women in the hope of physical contact, that we should instead look at building a business as an opportunity to increase our intelligence, to improve our ability to think critically and to solve difficult problems, all of which improve our overall level of human, thus making us more deserving of a high quality partner, improving our bodies. So instead of aiming to have big biceps and, and a six pack in hopes of encouraging more physical contact, that we should instead look to improving our bodies as part of the challenge to mastering ourselves, to, to see our bodies as the physical representation of the strength of our mind, to be worthy of a partner whose mind is equally as strong, to learn expression. When I first started learning salsa, I, I basically just saw it as a way for me to have more physical contact with women, which is why I always struggled with the motivation to keep practicing. When I began to see salsa as this incredible vehicle through which my very essence could manifest itself, as this beautiful conversation where the highest level male dancers learn to communicate through energy and where the highest level female dancers learn to read that energy and communicate back. When I saw salsa in this way, as something that made me a much better human, I suddenly felt incredible motivation to keep learning and to reach higher levels. And the reality is that everything that we do within our physical, mental, occupational, and expressive dimensions can be interpreted as something that moves us further along the path towards manifesting the greatness that is our best version. And this all becomes much easier when we consider how foolish it is to not act in this way, which hopefully 
is a bit easier after watching this video and more deeply considering these things for yourself. The people who most often complain about not being able to find a quality partner are almost always those who lack quality themselves. The people most often frustrated by the role that sex plays in their lives are almost always those unwilling to consider why. The people who learn to channel their sexual energy are almost always those who actually understand these things.